Hey cuties, I'm Miles Sexton, a content creator, activist, and loud and proud disruptor of the norm. On Our Private Bits, we talk about the things and people that don't get talked about enough or at all. Trust me, as a sober, HIV-positive, non-binary person, I would know. Join me as I chat with people in my life and from around the world whose stories deserve to be heard. Maybe you'll learn something new and you will definitely LOL. Our Private Bits is also part of the ACAST Creator Network. All right, cuties. Today on Our Private Bits, we have Sarah campos Ciccone joining us. She is a maximalist stylist and a content creator and has graced the pages of New York Times, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and Fashion Canada and happens to be like one of my biggest fashion inspirations on TikTok and Instagram, obviously. <laughs> Want to say hi? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Miles. Oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> how could I not? I, I feel like, you know, I guess it's been like a year almost. I'm trying to think when we did our shoot together, but it's oh, like, yeah. I feel like it's coming up on a year. It definitely. Since we, yeah. Since we first met. At least met. a year. Yeah. I remember seeing you on TikTok for the very first time and was like, this person probably lives in New York. I'm obsessed with them, but I want to be their best friend. <laughs> and then when I found out you also lived in Ontario, I was like, thank you algorithm for like giving me someone else in this industry that is like, just, I think breaking barriers and boundaries when it comes oh. to fashion, you know, thank in, in you. Canada. So yeah. Thank you. I got so excited when I, when I found out you were Canadian. <laughs> me too. Me too. Literally, yeah, it's it's always like that, like meeting people online, and then when you get to find out that they live like so close, and it's totally. like, wait, we can actually be like in real life best friends yes. too. And so I'm so glad we got to like do a shoot together, and hopefully like more things 100%. together in the future. Oh, so, I, yeah. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. I was like, I literally was so nervous to like DM you because I was like, <laughs> I wonder if she's going to see it. I don't know. <laughs> but like, I, I, I'm like, anyway, and then I was so glad. And then we ended up like doing this photo shoot at this crazy like adult yeah. amusement park kind of thing. It was and so like, fun. So yeah, we we're both like sinking in the ball pit trying, yeah. to, trying to serve fashion. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, literally one of my favorite shoots like to this day. <laughs> oh, it was. It, 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 was, was, so it was so iconic. <laughs> So I guess like, you know, I, I'm curious because, you know, I think we've had, we've had a few conversations, but I've ever, actually never asked you this. I guess like, how did you get into fashion? And like, where, where did that start? I guess like on, on your journey with yeah. baby Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I've always loved fashion. I've always been like super creative. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something that I've just always been passionate and interested in. And, um, I guess, I mean, I always kind of did my own thing on Instagram, but I always tell people it's when I kind of started posting content on TikTok mm -hmm. where I feel like I started building a following yes. and just like building my platforms from there. Um, so I would say like, yeah, TikTok pretty much like changed it all for me I just because of, yeah, the amount of people it could reach. But, um, yeah, I mean, just kind of from that, I just continued to kind of keep doing it. And now it's like, I get to do what I love doing every day as like my full-time job, which is. That's pretty cool. The I best mean, thing. Just getting to share your outfits online. Yeah. I think that's so ideal. It really is. Yeah. But when, when you were younger, like were like, I guess like what was like, were you super into fashion as like a kid or like how, how did that start? Yeah, I would say yeah. yes. Like I was definitely like a kid who would do the fashion shows like for my parents, oh, okay, like kind of get all dressed up. I know I even like dressed up my sister and like would do <laughs> her makeup. Like oh it's God. something I always loved doing. I used to even actually back in the day, back in like, I don't know, maybe like 2015 or yes. something. I had like my own YouTube where I was doing like makeup videos really? and thrift hauls yeah oh, like in cool. high school when yeah. like everyone's Same. like yeah exactly <laughs> so I feel like I kind of just always been sort of like that creative person and I feel like now that I'm more comfortable in who I am mm. and just like overall my personal style I just feel like I can kind of go even that further with everything it's just like you know everything's kind of everything kind of like makes more sense now that I'm just like more in who I am. Totally. I guess. Yeah. Was there like a moment of a sh like a shift? Because I feel like when I look back on your fashion, you know, mm -hmm. it was like very like Ryerson fashion girly. And yeah. then there was like, and then I feel like it's like Sarah. Kim, yeah. You know, yeah. like there, yeah. there's like these two like eras, uh, you know, yeah. uh, of, of your fashion. So like, yeah, like what what changed? What 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 was the switch? Yeah. You know? I know. I feel like I always kind of like refer back to like that time where I feel like. Bef okay, so let's say I'm in like high school. I feel like I was very much dressing 
based on trends. Yes, what totally. everyone else was wearing, what everyone thought was cool. Like I was like, yeah, I'm still a fashion girly because everyone still like wants to wear these Uggs that I'm wearing. Yes. But it wasn't like me. Totally. I wasn't, I wasn't just being me. I was following like, you know, the trends and totally. stuff like that. And so I think that I would say like a lot of, I always tell people when I started secondhand shopping and like vintage mm -hmm. shopping is where I feel like I really get to kind of just pick out pieces based on what appeals to me. And there's no like trends or anything I'm totally. really thinking about. Um, but a lot of it just kind of came from, again, like self-confidence. I feel like I've went through things in my life where you almost have to just kind of like love the shit out of yourself yes. where, you know, it's like, maybe I don't have this person's like not going to do it. Like I need to do it. And I don't know, I guess just like things happened in my life where I was just like, I'm just going to be me. And like, mm -hmm. who cares? Like what anyone says or thinks anymore? Like I don't anymore. I love me. So I'm going to do that. It totally so, is. I, you know, I think someone else we were talking with today, Antonia, you know, we were, we were kind of discussing the same thing where it's like, you know, fashion can be such a like medium mm -hmm. of like, giving yourself confidence and mm -hmm. like helping you like love yourself, you know, before maybe we're like there internally. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like the superficial sort yeah. of thing that I think a lot of people like look at fashion as, yes. you know, I think it very much can be like a medium to healing, yeah. you know, for a lot of people. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree for sure. It's like something that can change my mood like instantly. So yeah. I believe that. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Now, I, I feel like, you know, like with with I guess like for your own like self-expression mm -hmm. too like is there ever like I guess it was there sort of like a moment though like on this sort of journey where you were like okay I'm gonna start like leaning into like more maximalism or like you know like what, what I guess like I'm just curious like what that yeah. shift was yeah you know for for yourself I I would say it started again like just as I'm like posting outfit videos I mean mm -hmm. I kind of still do it even to this day like yeah. I I do like to kind of like push things like yes. where I can like, okay. okay, like if, if this is breaking the rules, like I'm going to, I'm going to break them. Yes. Like I kind of have, I, I guess I've always been like that in a way. Like I mm -hmm. even refer back sometimes when I was in high school and we had to wear a uniform yeah. and I would like constantly just go against the dress code. Yes. I feel like I did it because number one, I didn't want to wear a uniform, but also because I just almost wanted this like reaction a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes what I wear like provokes this reaction in people that watch me which I find kind of funny sometimes. Totally. So sometimes it's even things like that, that kind of like instigate me to like, hmm, maybe I should just like go even further. Like I love building outfits that have a theme yes. around them. To me, it's like, oh, I can tell a story. And I feel like maybe before I wasn't as, I, I didn't think about it that much. Like yeah. People think I throw random things together and it's like, no, there's- no, There's so much thought. There is a lot of thought. It. Like, trust me. But yeah, I would say, I think it's just like experimenting and having fun with your outfits, it kind of inspires me to be more creative. Totally. Yeah. I love that. Now, like, I guess like, you know, I think with all of the the, the positivity and like the amazingness, there also comes like the other side mm -hmm. of, of, you know, dealing with, with people's reactions on yeah. and off social media. Like, how do you navigate that? Because I'm, I'm sure you cause a lot of reactions within oh, yeah. people. I mean, I, I relate. So. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> on a different For, level, but like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's, um, I, I would say like, it's definitely something that is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you have all like eyes on you sometimes, whether it's like good attention or bad attention. Yeah. Sometimes people are giving you like weird stares and stuff. I think that I, again, I feel confident enough in myself mm -hmm. that I don't feel like that really gets under my skin. Yes. I'm not going to say I don't ever feel a little bit hurt sometimes sure. by comments. Of course, that's natural. Everybody will. But it is something that I feel like, again, too, I know I'm posting things. I'm putting them out in the world. And I know it comes with the territory as well sometimes, totally. as sad as that sounds, too. Um, but at the end of the day, I said this before in one of my videos and I always feel like it still like applies that like, I don't, you know, I don't mind not being like everyone's little cup of tea totally. there. I think it's better to kind of have like, you know, it's okay to kind of cause a little bit of like people get people angry sometimes yeah, for no reason really, but it still does. And I think that's kind of funny and 100%. powerful. Totally. Yeah. I think it's about being like you know, there's nothing wrong with being a disruptor. You yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. I think it like it helps because, you know, again, people are afraid of what they don't know or exactly. what they don't understand, you know, so you're like causing some sort of reaction. That's in what people, it, so. it really is. It's like what I'm wearing is causing people to like look at themselves and yes. be like, wait, 
could I wear that? Maybe I can't. Now all of a sudden I'm going to be a hater because I can't, I don't think I can pull it off. Totally. Or I don't have I the confidence. I can acknowledge that within myself. It's you know? very much like a reflection of who they are. And that's why I try to never take it personally because it's not about me, you know? Totally. What, like, what, what advice would you give to other people that like are maybe struggling with trying to navigate that? Because I think a lot of people yeah. don't realize like the underbelly of social media. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, something that I do, or at least something that like, like I'll like give myself like compliments in the mirror, like yes. especially when I'm getting dressed. It's like something that I mean, I feel like I do it in my videos, but even like off my yeah, <laughs> offside, I love it. I'm like in the mirror. I'm like, oh, this is like slay. Like you go, girl. Like you look good. Like I, I think that the more you tell yourself that, the mm -hmm. more you really do believe it. I know it sounds silly, but it's no, I hundred percent believe true. that. It's true. And um, I mean, I surround myself with like really good people. My family and my friends are so supportive. And I mean, even if they think my outfit looks insane, they're like you go. We love it. We totally. love you. So I think that that's like probably one of my, my greatest pieces of advice would just be to kind of, I mean, it's hard to say just be confident because that's something that takes time too. But having like the right people around you mm -hmm. and just like making those little, doing those little things daily to kind of like build up your confidence. Exactly. Is, yeah. Is like, important. I don't think that you should be around people that are going to tear you down. No. And like, it's so important to like find those spaces. And I think a lot of people like they they forget about the importance of community and yeah. like having those groups of people around you to support you and lift you up. You know, it's like I grew up in such a small town. It's like I had to leave that tiny little town to like move to Toronto so that I could like be with other people who understood yeah. me because it was like, you know, I was just in like such a toxic environment yeah. before, you know, before I left. Right. Yeah. But, it, but it really does. Yeah. I, I totally agree with yeah. you. I think it's important. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Now I'm curious though, like, are are you dating? Are you have you been going on dates with people? Are you I seeing have. someone? I'm not. <laughs> like what? I'm like, <laughs> I, I I'm like, what what is that journey like? Because oh, I, I, I just I I like I wish that I could like get you on Tinder and be like, I'm swiping <laughs> right, you know? I think is that the way you swipe for to the match with someone? I'm yeah, like, I don't even... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, no, it I mean, I'm like, I feel like um dating is like so interesting like I, I feel like I never meet like a lot of like-minded people yes. I've like went on so many dates in the last like year pretty much so many like first dates not yes. a lot of thirds okay a lot of first and seconds okay not okay but um yeah I guess like I mean it could be like where I'm at in my life too maybe it's just not because there's some compatibility I'm just like uh, I'm here and you're over mm -hmm. here you're over You're here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for the most part, it's like, I think it's a really fun experience. I I was in a, like a long-term relationship a few years ago. So this is kind of like my first time being like in my 20s, my mid-20s and like dating again. Mm -hmm. um, and also just like being a lot more comfortable in who I am totally. in dating, which is, again, something that I was not in my previous relationship at all. So it's it's... It's different, but I'm also taking it like a lot. Like I'm not taking anything. I'm taking everything with like a grain of salt. Like I'll go on a date. We hit it off. That's great. But if not, no sweat. Totally. It's just fun. Did you ever have like a moment where you would like, like strip yourself of like parts of your style for other people? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, what was that like for you? terrible yeah like actually like gut-wrenching I feel like and the fact that I even did that still I'm just like how why totally. why did they do that doesn't it feel like you've just like betrayed such a part of like who you are yeah like, yeah I, I feel like you know for myself like you know, especially when I was younger in my, in my, like, you know, yeah. my 18 to yeah. like 25, like I used to wear so much makeup every single day. Like yeah. it was like borderline full drag, you know? <laughs> and it was like, but like so many times when I was dating, it was like, men wanted me to like not have all of that makeup on yeah. and like wanted me to present more masculine. And like, it was so hard because it's like, you know, you want to be seen and you want to be feel like people are attracted to you, mm -hmm. but then you're like, but this is actually like who I am yeah. at the core. And it's like, I don't know. I really struggled with it when I was like, when I was younger, like finding that balance of yep. like showing up for myself and like yep. not letting other people treat me exactly. that way. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. I think that's important. And I think a, a part of like the reason why even like making like get ready with me videos when I'm going to things is like to show people that exact thing. 
like whether you're going to, I don't know, like your best friend's wedding or mm. you're going on a first date, like still be you. Yes. You know what I mean? You don't need to completely change for the occasion or for that person. Like, totally. you know, you got to still be yourself. You have so. to because they're going to find out, you exactly. know, like it, that's the, really the whole point is you're going there because you're trying to show them who you are. You exactly. want to be like you're. Yeah. No. You, you. You, and it's like, you know, you don't want. Yeah. Like by not showing those parts of yourself, it's like, why, why, why would you even want to entertain going on a date with someone yes. at the end of the day if they're not going to like love you for exactly who you are? Yes, exactly. You know? Yeah. I'll exactly. never forget. Like I did. I was at this like party and there was like this beautiful like blonde guy that had this like blonde mohawk but I was like wearing this like completely feathered like blazer and I had like this dark purple lipstick on and I was like oh I really want to go talk to him like he's kind of making eyes with me and my friend was like if he can't love you with lipstick on he can't love you at all and he like pushed me (laughs) and I like went into the like over towards him and was like you know it's such a like movie moment and I was like and next thing I know my purple lipstick was all over his face (laughs) (laughs) but it was like that was like such a turning point for me yeah I feel like in my journey where I was like okay fuck this like this hot guy can love me with lipstick on or at least make out with me like that's great exactly exactly (laughs) that's what I mean it's literally just like it all comes down to just confidence really too totally yeah does and and finding I guess like finding yourself yeah yeah in in that I guess yeah yeah standing up for yourself yeah totally well (laughs) I I feel like if it's something that you want I feel like there's another I don't know I'm I'm curious like like what kind of guys are you attracted to or or people are you attracted to in general like yeah like I feel like Okay, like people are always like, oh, like you're such a maximalist. Like, would you date another like maximalist like type of person? And I always think because I've never dated anybody that's been even like remotely like creative as in like just let alone like in the way that they dress, but any any sense of who they are. And um, yeah, I don't think I would want like another maximalist. I feel like we would just be too much. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like a more toned down like like styled person in some I mean I'm not I'm not picky I like I embrace anyone for who they are I care more about the person than what they wear same um but I would still want them to obviously like love all of my outfits 100 even if they hate them they still have to compliment them Uh, exactly exactly (laughs) I feel the same way I know I'm like I I, I'm like you know, there's like this, the, the like social media part of me, like, yeah. you know, like the couple that like dresses really cool. Yeah. I, I forget what their name is on TikTok, but I'm like, oh, I, I like one day we're going to have like Sarah and the other person, and like yeah. they're going to be like rocking these outfits and then I'll just like, my life will be complete. So. <laughs> I know. I'm literally just going to put like on my dating profile, I'm just going to be like hiring a plus, <laughs> a plus one for my content, please. You have to dress cool. <laughs> I love it. No, trust. I mean, t- Tyler is like, oh. you know, He's like very like, you know, he's like very minimal yeah. and like manly in his thing. But I'm like always like trying to like encourage him to like dress, like dress up a little bit more, like yeah. maybe wear this yeah. and like whatever. But he's like so against it. So I just have to put him in my outfit. Yeah. So it's an outfit swap is like the only way to yeah. like get him to like wear a little bit of fashion. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. Your content to- together yeah. is my favorite. It's oh, so thanks. funny. <laughs> it's so good. But I feel you. I-, I enjoyed the balance. I dated someone like myself mm-hmm. like for a while and we were so similar. And I agree with you. It was like too much. Yeah, like I bit. felt like we were like constantly stepping on each other. That's so. yeah, that's not good. No, agreed. There's agreed. only one diva in the house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's not you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, I something I think you mentioned like more towards the beginning is like you were talking a little bit about like sustainability and like mm-hmm. thrifting. Is like why is that important for you? I guess like I, as someone who works in fashion. Yeah. Um. So. For me, I've been shopping secondhand or I guess like thrifting yes. um, for like almost like 10 years now. Like I started doing it in high school um, and when everyone like was like, oh, it's gross. Um, and now it's like such a big thing, which I think is great. Totally. I think that not only again now. So for like environmental reasons, yes. obviously, even working in the fashion industry, I can clearly now have like a very large knowledge of like how bad um, fast fashion is. Yes. Um, and I think that also just like now that secondhand shopping is like becoming, I guess it's becoming a little bit more popular, which I think is great. It's something that I always like suggest for people again, when like kind of figuring out your personal style, or even if you're someone who 
I don't know, like even I, when I was growing up, I used to love watching like runway shows. Mm -hmm. And if I was like, oh, something like this, but I don't want to, you know, invest in this expensive piece. It's like something that is a lot more like affordable as well. Totally. Um, And then as well as like, there are so many online secondhand marketplaces now, which I I personally honestly shop probably more secondhand online now than even in stores. Um, And I think it's great. Again, I think it's very much like a place where you can kind of just like, it's like you're sifting through a bunch of like someone's donated stuff and you're just picking out like the gems that like Mm -hmm. appeal to you. For me, it was always like about finding like a treasure that you just know no one else is going to have this. Like it's handmade, one of one. Like that was my favorite thing about about secondhand shopping. And just, I guess, fashion in general. I like things that are very unique and different and what I feel like it gives more meaning to it too when it's like, oh, I'm the only one that has it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say, yeah, so that's kind of like something that has been just like something I've always secondhand shopped for so long now. And I guess I've been implementing like sustainability practices in mm-hmm. different parts of my life too, even like sustainable makeup brands and things like that. I, there's always like more that you can be doing and, totally. and stuff like that to help the environment. Um, yeah. I, no, I, I think it is so important, especially like, I mean, the fashion industry is one of the world's like largest polluters of like yeah, landfill, it's... you know, and so much clothing is going to waste. That's like perfectly good yeah. clothes, yeah. you know, even so... to be upcycled or something, totally. you know, which is another great thing that I haven't yet done yet. I'm trying to learn how to sew a little uh, bit. I wish I could. I want to start too. making my own stuff. Yeah. I, oh my God. I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Was there like, like what was like your first like major like thrift find like do you do you have like a moment where you like found something that you were like oh my goodness like this is the best thing ever oh I mean many like okay I would say like one of my favorites that I found was probably that I found like this one 1980s gunny sax dress. Cool. But I basically got it for free. So yes. to me, that was like such a steal. It was like perfect condition and it fits me like a glove. Like uh. anytime I find something that also fits me perfectly, I'm yes. like, this is just like meant to be. Totally. So that was probably one of my favorites. And then the other thing I found that was my favorite find okay. because I sold it. Yes. And when I found I found it at a thrift store for like five bucks. Yeah. Um, It was a Chrome Hearts hoodie. Oh. And it was like an authentic one. No way. And I had looked it up and it was like almost a grand. So, I mean, the fact someone just dropped it off at a value village yeah, is like shocking. No um, so that would be like the coolest find. I but love it. Yeah. Love some it. random things in between. One time I found a jacket that had a love letter in the pocket <gasps> from like the oh. 50s. So sometimes you find like really sentimental things too that totally. are so cute. So it's oh. like it had a whole life before I found it. It is. It is so much fun. I'll never forget like I was like, I don't know, I think I was like 20 or 21. And I was like, went to this like Salvation Army and they were having like their 50% off day yeah. or whatever. And I was like going through the blazers and then like I pulled out this like pink Chanel tweed Oh, five dollars regular price, see, and I got it for fifty percent off. Like I was like looking for the cameras. I was yeah. like, "Where is like Ashton Kutcher's about to like yeah. jump out and be like, you got punked?'" Yeah, because I was like, like "We're gonna no take way. that." <laughs> this is like this beautiful Chanel, and That's it like didn't crazy. fit me, but I didn't care. Oh, I was yeah, like, "I'm I buying this yeah. because it's amazing." That's but, like like, so like you, good. I sold it and yeah. was like, "Great." <laughs> right? No, it's yeah, it's that feeling when you find it. It's like. <gasps> my God, I like my life is made. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And I think that like people like, I, like you said, like, I, I remember like, you know, we grew up like in my small town, like, you know, my parents couldn't afford new clothes. Yeah. So we just like always were going, we are, yeah. our thrift stores are called like Frenchies on oh, the East cool. coast. Just, I don't know, so random. And, uh, so, you know, that's where we would get our clothes, but yeah. it was like, same, like people would always like make fun of me at school, like yeah. for wearing secondhand clothes, but I was like, okay, whatever. But I love, like, I love the idea of it. And I think that like, people don't what people don't realize is like you don't need to spend a lot of money to look like fabulous no. you know like I really don't believe that like I think no. about like you know the designer girlies that are like all out there and they're dropping like all of their entire paycheck to buy this like one designer piece which is like power to them if that brings you joy and like yeah. that's happy but like you can find probably something so similar at a thrift shop because so much of fashion is like the history of fashion is like so circular yeah, right it is. so it's like 
I don't know. I, I I feel like everyone when I was younger and I'd be wearing these outfits and people would be like, where did you get that? And I was like, oh, I just like thrifted it at Valley Village. Yeah. They're like, really? Yeah. Like, can I buy it off you? Yeah. And I'm like, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so true. I always say too, like, it's not even about like what you're wearing. It's like how you wear it. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Like someone can wear, people will always be like, oh my gosh, you can wear anything and pull it off. It's like, no, you could too. You just have to believe that yes. you can pull it off and then you do exactly like it's how you you know how you wear it with your confidence and stuff like that but I love mixing like high and low yes, end and same. I think that's like a great thing to obviously showcase too like in videos and stuff it's like I could do one high end look and one low end yes. look and it's you know what I mean it's the same it's achievable in you know without spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars exactly yeah I think, I think it's so important do you have any tips for like people that because I, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I can't thrift. And I'm like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Everyone can thrift. Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. what would be, I guess, like your tips to like, you know, navigating a thrift shop? Okay. Yeah. So, well, my tip. Okay. So I normally go in kind of with like what I'm looking for in mind. Yes. I think it helps like you to kind of not be overwhelmed. Because totally. thrift stores are just like a bunch of crap thrown there. So I think like sometimes I've even seen people um, mention like making a Pinterest board, mm -hmm. which actually I've done it before. And it actually does help to, again, kind of just keep your mind on like what you're really looking for. Also, so you don't buy so many things totally. when you don't need to. Um, so that's like one of my first tips is kind of have an idea. Um, I'm someone who like, I don't know why, but I always go to the shoes and bags first mm -hmm. as if for some reason they're going to be like gone when I come around later. So I just go and to that first. And then I kind of just go up and down the aisles. I think like another thing is like, look at everything pretty much. Like it's hard to say like, Oh, I'm just scanning by and I just, something picks like, you know, just catches my eye. I feel like you really need to like look through. Yeah, you got to dig. So it takes time. Totally. Some people are just don't have like the patience for it. No, and they're just true. like, Oh, I don't care. It's like, no, you like, I'll spend hours in a thrift store. Like I'm looking at everything. Totally. <laughs> um, but I would say like that's kind of some of my best advice. I mean, I always check tags. That's something that I keep in mind. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about like vintage tags, you can sometimes like find the year it's from, oh. um, something like that. You can even just looking up tags just to kind of know what you're getting. Sometimes it's nice to know like the history of the brand or like, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe someone's grandma made it or something. It's cool. Um, so I kind of just really look for things that are like, that, or I guess I'm drawn to anything that's like obviously colorful or like wacky. Yes. I'm usually all about. That's why I love the grandma sweaters. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just some things that I keep in mind personally. Some tips. Totally, <laughs> I, I, it's so good because I think there's so many like brands you can also find in oh, thrift yeah. shops that it's like that don't exist anymore, <laughs> and they were like, you know, it's like whenever I find like Halston pieces, and yeah. I get so excited because yeah. it's like so hard to find yeah. like actual like pieces like that yep. and they're worth so much now exactly and, but like, you know everyone's grandmas are just like throwing them away I and know. i'm like no yeah yeah <laughs> literally where they're dying totally <laughs> they're just going there yeah. <laughs> not to be dark about <laughs> no. it but sometimes i'm like i don't know maybe someone died in this dress that i just thrifted <laughs> like, hey it's okay it's fine i mean the quality i like you exactly. can't it's like uh, I, I feel like clothes now are made so like so poorly oh, even like yeah. luxury like clothes really it's no just like it's, it's so upsetting to me and it's like I still would rather like a vintage yep. designer piece over uh like a modern one because yep, it's just too. like it, it really is and yeah it lasts totally yeah so even sometimes like people will say like oh sometimes like curated vintage stores they have their prices a little higher mm. but you are getting something that you know is going to last you totally like it's a real vintage piece and so sometimes it is worth paying a little bit extra for that. And I don't mind doing that too. You can support a small business. So 100%. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so I'm curious too, though, like with, I guess, like the whole aesthetic was fashion always something that like you led with first before like hair and makeup? Or was it like, yeah, like, what was that journey? Because like, for me, it was like makeup was my first one. And then it like, I started doing my hair and then I started dressing cooler. Okay. So yeah. Like, what was, what was your, what, I'm curious about like, what was your journey with those, yeah. those pieces? I would say because I had like my YouTube, I would say I was very much into makeup. And I know that Love I learned that. all my makeup off YouTube. Yeah. Like I would same. watch like, I don't even know if these people, I, Makeup by Mandy was this yes. one girl I used I know to exactly watch. Who you're talking she about. was like 14. I think she's like, I don't know. It's, this is like over 10 years ago now. 
and now she's like a kid or something. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, like the whole like makeup YouTube guru era yes. was when I was really watching it. And I feel like that was kind of like where my whole like creative like journey started. So it definitely started more with makeup. With my hair, I mean, now I dye it a different color, I feel like every few months. Yes. Which is nothing different than when I was a little bit like younger. Like I have, I've had pink, red hair, like in high school and stuff. Nothing too crazy. But I think it was more my makeup. And then fashion kind of was like, uh, it kind of followed, I guess. I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love the bounce. And it's so cool. It's, you're, you're so good at doing your makeup too. Oh, like thank I'm always you. like, I literally, I'm always like, so sh- like, I don't know. I was like always looking to you for inspiration oh, of like your makeup you. looks too. I think it, but it's also like, I think it's like one of those things that people don't realize like makeup and hair. It's like another way of accessorizing exactly. I think, your outfit. So like, you know, if you're not good in one or not strong in one area, like, you know, try playing in different areas. It's actually, yeah, very true. That's actually really good advice too. Cause sometimes people are like, oh, I wouldn't wear that. And it's like, sometimes you don't even need to be like such a maximalist with your outfits. Totally. You could literally just do like some fun makeup, fun eyeliner, like yeah. whatever. But yeah, I, I love, I love kind of tying in my makeup with the outfit and making it like cohesive. Totally. So it's like even more of a, packs more of a punch I feel yeah, like yeah it's so true I'll always like I always love the way like Mark Jacobs like describes like when he's like creating like a runway look it's like yeah. okay like what is this character and like every look is so individual to like each of those looks and I'm like yeah okay like what 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 version of Miles or Sarah am I gonna yeah. do today and like what are all those elements of that exactly you know? what does right? that embody you know yeah so. no that's literally the most fun part of like the job is like you're you can literally just be whoever you want to be like any day totally <laughs> it's so true it's so true all right. So before we wrap up, I have a very serious question to ask you. Okay. What's your favorite color? Because you wear like every color. I'm like, do you have a favorite one? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> very yes. controversial question. <laughs> I do. I do have a favorite color. Um, My favorite color is green. Oh, me too. Yeah, that's oh, why I, love I also that. love, love oh your dress. Gosh. Oh my God. I wore like, this just for you. It's yeah, fair. literally. It's like you're new. <laughs> yeah, Subconsciously. We're connected. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Well, we pissed off the blues and the reds, but it's okay. <laughs> Green's the best. It is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on this podcast of with course. me. I appreciate you. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank like, you. you know, I think I know that putting yourself out the way that you do into the world is not easy. And I, and I know it can take a toll on people. So I just, mm. as someone who appreciates you so much, thank you for doing this hard work of being a disruptor in this world. And I think just making this world a better place because we need more people like you that can just be be their authentic selves it, it needs to happen <laughs> oh, thank you you're making me cry over here <laughs> no you're the best thank you so much for having me this of was co- so fun of course of course <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah.